Welcome. I'm Dawn Bjork with K Squared Technologies. Thank you so much for joining us today and about our look at how in Microsoft Excel you can transform data with Power Query. That is what are the tools that are available that are built into Excel for you. So let's explore really what we talk about, what, the, what we mean by Power Query. What exactly is this incredible tool for us? So Power Query is an Excel add-in, it's absolutely free, that simplifies the process of basically importing data from different source files. And the nice thing about this, this is a business intelligence tool. It doesn't require you as a user to use any specific code. There isn't any programming. And the, the other key of it is it doesn't change your original data. So it is uh, an excellent way for us to be able to clean up, change data, and set it up in a way that we can then further you know, ask business questions about it. So it's really a great way for us to normalize that information. And it's often as a much better option for you than trying to create a macro to clean up data. So that's just the kind of the foundation behind that. And we're gonna dig into that a little bit more. Now let's talk about Power Query versus Power Pivot. So Power Query is the, really how we get our data ready. And Power Pivot is the topic we've covered in a previous webinar session. And that is really how we can start asking questions of that data, how we can build data models against our data. So they really work hand in hand. And here they, they both are available to you in Excel without any additional third party programs. So those are some of those tools that really can take you further in terms of how you can start asking important business questions about your data. But um, in Power Query, what we're going to explore here is a <clears throat> really, for, first of all, getting started and just cleaning up the data. As we can get data from a lot of different sources, it might not be just from Excel, but it, sometimes it just isn't set up or structured in a way that will work best for us. So it might either be inconsistent or we might need to um, change data. So maybe split it up into multiple columns, for instance, get rid of um, uh, blank rows or columns, those types of things. And with Power Query, we also can locate duplicate rows, which can be really helpful, especially if you maybe you are just inputting data into an Excel worksheet and you don't have ways to capture if there might be some duplication in the information. How can we use Power Query to build calculations and, other, and apply other actions against our data? And once we have our data kind of cleaned up, we actually then can create pivot tables and pivot charts against that. As our data evolves, we also can add new data to this query that we've set up so that we don't have to repeat those steps. So the idea is that we could have data from multiple months or years or locations, and we would be able to use Power Query as an option for us to be able to consistently set up actions that would apply to all of those um, data sources without having to go through it one after another. So we're just going to be looking at Excel worksheets, but know that that can apply to other data sources as well for you. Briefly, the process with Power Query is that we're going to connect to Power Query. We're going to set up those steps that will transform our data. It will we'll combine data then from whatever specified sources we have. And then we're able to load that back into an Excel worksheet. So let's explore what those steps look like in Excel. And thanks for, thanks for joining us, by the way. And if you have any questions, drop those into the Q&A portion of our Zoom and we'll do our best to be able to address those.
So first of all, let's go ahead then and look at what our what we have for our data. This is just an example of the first sheet that we're going to work with. So there's a couple things about this. First of all, um, we can see we might have to clean up some blank rows and some other things as well. We might want to build calculations. We might want to separate out the data, for instance, for the customer and other um, applications for this. So this is just an example. Now, one of the things I want you just to notice as well is the worksheet tab name. And it's not that you have to use a specific name, but that will be one of the things we're going to reference as we start building and working with Power Query. And that, so that worksheet tab name is order data in this case. So this happens to be just data that is from 2019. But maybe we have data from, as I mentioned, multiple years, multiple locations, months, things like that. Maybe it's for different products. So for our example, what we're going to be looking at here is I have those data sheets in a folder. I'm just calling that Power Query Practice. Once again, that is not a required name. But what I want you to see here is that those sheets are all in that one folder. So this could be a master folder that you have for your data. And what this means then is that we're going to assume that they have that each of these sheets has, a, has the same structure, but it may not have the same issues with it. And by having them all in the same folder, not only will we be able to combine the data, but we'll also be able to apply other actions to it as well. So that's one of the things I want you to, mention, to notice here. When we launch and we go into Power Query, we're going to specify that we want to work with this folder. Now we also could work with an individual file as well. So that is another way for us to work with it. But that is one of the things to keep in mind that is, here we have data from three years. And now if we have an additional year, for instance, we can add it to this folder and it automatically has all those actions applied to it and it will then be combined with it. So that's one of the things that we have as powerful as well. So that is just to give you a little bit about the structure that we're looking for, that you want to be kind of organizing and planning your data ahead of time. Now I'm going to just, I don't have to keep this open. I just want you to know what that looks like. And I'll just start here with a blank worksheet on that. So those are the, that's the idea of what the sample file looks like. But each of those worksheets has the same type of data and column headings. Now, how do we get started? Well, we're going to move to the data tab here in Excel. And over on the left-hand side, we have this get and transform data. So there's lots of options that you may want to explore on your own, but we're going to then dig into this get data option here. And you can see here again, that there's a lot of different ways for you to what the data sources might be here. I'll choose from file. And we're going to then, in this case, say from folder. So remember that folder that we had. And from here then, what I'm going to do is I'll point to that specific folder, which was called Power Query Practice. So that's the folder that I'm going to where the data is found. And I'll choose open here. So now it's just simply showing you this is what it finds. And this is a good way for you just to be able to confirm and to see that. Now, know that, as I mentioned, all the things that we're doing are not going to change the original source data. So that is a helpful thing to, to know as well. Next, we're going to choose this option here to combine. And we'll choose combine and transform data. Now, the option it, options in some systems might be called combine and edit, but no, don't, no concern about that. 
This lets me modify as needed before I bring it into Excel. So uh, that's what I'm going to, I'm set up my settings in this first. Let's try that again. Oh goodness, okay. <laughs> That's not, that's, that's concerning me. <laughs> I don't think, <laughs> let's try this again. We're going to get the data from the file, from the folder. Whoops. And I'm going to try to open this up. Okay. Here I'll choose my transform data for some reason then we might be having some issues with that. All right. Okay. Now let's see if we can. <laughs> this is what I have as my data here. All right. So it found that I'm going to close this. And I'll discard that. Let's just see if I can try that one more time. This is not the way we like to have this run really smoothly for us, for sure. And this is yay. Okay. Hang it. Thanks for, thanks for your, pay. this is real life. This is what happens sometimes. <laughs> now, what I want, what we're going to see here is my, it's just finding the first file. And, and that happens to be 2019, which is just fine, but you could pick a different one in that list. So this is just a way for me too to confirm that it's finding the data. So I'm going to go to here to order data. Here again, your worksheet workbooks might have multiple worksheets, but in this case, we're, we're good to go. So I'm picking order data and it's taking me to that worksheet. So those are the steps that we have there. So just know that, um, that these are the basic ways for us then to launch this. So we're going to be combining the files and transforming. So there's multiple steps that will be taking place for that. And I'll go ahead and OK. And now we're in the Power Query interface. This is what we want to be looking at here. So a couple different things about that. I'll go ahead and maximize this just so it doesn't uh, uh, be not any more complicated. But no, we're running this through Excel. So we have a main ribbon. We have on the left-hand side, we're building our queries. On the right-hand side are the query settings that we already have <laughs> some things that have taken place automatically as it's loaded it. So in this case, for instance, it's making sure that we have consistency with our column names, for instance, and it created a new column here to identify that source. So we're going to basically build our actions, build our steps, which will show up over here on the right-hand side. We're going to use this first file to create these examples of all the steps we want to apply to the other files as well. So that's, that's what we're heading here. Now, it may not be real easy to see because it's pretty small, but at the bottom it says, this is just showing us the top 1000 rows, but every, all the rows are, the transformation is going to apply to all the rows that you have, even if you have many thousands with that. So, and this is an assumption that each of the files that we're going to be working with do have the same structure and we're going to apply some changes to that. So first of all, this first column here, this is a column we're going to remove. So how do we get to that? Well, in our home tab here, we have remove columns and we can simply just remove the selected column. And it's currently selected, but if it wasn't, 
we could actually just click on the, the top of it as we might expect in Excel. So I will remove that column. Notice over on the right hand side what happens, it becomes an action that will be applied to this. That also means you can change the order of these actions and you can remove actions if you realize, oh, I didn't like that. Because once again, it's not changing the original source data. So that becomes one of the things that can be helpful here. Another thing we have is that we, we might have records that we really don't need. And so we have some records here that are marked as a promotion. And so it's not actually uh, an order. And rather than trying to go through and clean those out, this is one of the interesting things about that. We can actually exclude them because we know what we're looking for. So in this case, we just go to our drop down here and then we would filter it just like any other filter. And that is that we'll scroll down here to the bottom of the list and I'll simply uncheck and say, this is an order number I don't wanna see. So we'll go ahead and okay. And notice what happens, they're no longer part of it. So I'm filtering those rows, which means the transformed results, which will all show up in a worksheet, will not include those. So that just to start giving you an idea of what's possible. We also have a situation here where the customer information is combined. And sometimes this can happen because we're working with different systems, we're downloading it, we may be getting it from uh, customers, clients, or something that's outside of Excel. So in this case, what I want to do is I'm going to want to split this into a customer ID and customer name. Now we do, this assumes that we have a consistency in how this is structured because we're just giving it some parameters about how to behave. So first of all, we have this selected. Now I'm going to right click on this and you can see, look at all the different things that are available. So there's a lot of options. I'm going to, I want to split this column and how do we split it? Notice you could do it by the number of characters and other criteria, but I'll do it by the delimiter because there happens to be a divider between that ID and the customer name. So this is going to launch for us to ask us what to specify with that. Now, in this case, it's a space, a dash, and a space. So that delimiter will, will be removed from the data and this data will be split into those two columns. So that's what's happening in this particular example. So I'll go ahead and apply this and just okay. Now we can see we've got two separate columns now with that. And let's rename this. So I'll double click and I could just call that customer ID. And for this one, that will be here again, double click. That's customer name. Now don't worry too much about these column lists. That is, it can be really tempting to say, well, I wanna fix that. And you certainly can in some cases, but that's really, we're just looking at how can we set this data up in a way that will be helpful for us. So we've renamed those columns because we have to have unique column headings for each one of those. Over on the left-hand side, we really don't, this isn't going to really be necessary for us that we're just building this query against that folder. So I'm going to minimize this navigation pane. That gives us a little bit more room to work and to be able to see these columns because we, they're, you can see they're pretty, pretty consistent here. And what I wanna do is move over to the right-hand side where we have some, information on the um, some numbers related to revenue and cost. And I want to do another a calculation here again. And when our data is coming from other sources, there may be other calculations we want to apply to that. And we, uh, we could also apply that calculation to the end result. But the um, value here is that we could build it right into those uh, to all of the data. So I've got revenue and cost. And what I want to do is then figure out what the profit is. 
So with that, we're going to build a calculation. But the, the key is when you do calculations, make sure that you are careful about the order of how you select them because it's going to, we're going to, it'll take the first one and then the second one, and we may have more than that. So in this case, I want, I'll select revenue, hold control and pick cost. So as I mentioned that the order is important. And what now what we want to do is we're going to pick add column at the top here as we're going to create a new column. And what this will do then is just going to be a standard column and you'll see here it's from a number. So these are these groupings are based upon the kind of data it is. This will be a standard column. And what we're going to do with this is subtract. So that's why we want to be careful about the order that we pick with it. And now we have this subtraction. So the first thing we want to do here is this move this so that it is in a more logical location. And we'll double click on the heading. So this is more descriptive as the profit. So that's what we've got so far. Now, notice a, a little bit about the formatting here. You'll see that we'll, we'll display in these column headings in terms of how it's currently formatted. So we've got decimal here and, and here. And what we can do here is we're going to select these once again. I'll just use control for that. And we want to apply some formatting to these. So that's the first thing we'll do is, is to select those. Now I'll right click and here's change type. So change the way that it's displayed. And from this then what I can do is pick currency. So now each one of these is changed. Now, we, we, one of the things you'll notice is you may still have to do apply some formatting to the end result, but, but at least right now we can see that we're changing the type. And keep in mind, everything that we're doing is showing up here as a step here in our query settings. Now, what if we wanna do some other calculations? In this case, we're going to look at the, our dates. We have, and working with that. And whoops, I forgot one of the steps here, which is that we have here. And that is, I've got some blank rows that I want to get rid of. So let's go back to that one, make sure that that gets fit in here. Under the home tab here is remove rows. And we'll simply, you can see I have some that are labeled as null. I'm just going to remove the blank rows and those will disappear. Now, I could take these then, this step, although it would be fine staying here, I'm going to drag this up to where we have then, we had removed columns. We had removed that first column and I'll put this after removed rows. Now notice what happens here too. If you click on this step, you're going to see where you were at that particular point. I don't have my profit in here yet. But now as I move down, I can start to see each of those actions. So this can be a really helpful way for you to lay out those steps in a useful manner. And also maybe to determine that there might be some steps that you don't need, or as we just did to reorder them. So that is one of the other things that we have happening here too. So let's say we want to take the, we want to figure out what's the difference between the shift date and the order date. That is how much time did it take between those two. So that's a date calculation. Once again, we want to be aware of the order in which we select it. So I'm going to pick the ship date first because that will be uh, that will be a more recent date. And then control to select the order date. Once again, I want to add a column. So we go back to the ribbon. And in the column, you'll notice these are grayed out from the number and text, but here I have date. And I want to subtract dates. So that's what's going to happen in this case. Now I have that subtraction. 
Now I have that information. And once again, I can move this and I'll rename this as well. Not days to ship. So that's the, another application then for the Power Query. And keeping in mind, these are changes that we're applying to this. You can almost think that we've just kind of brought in the data, but it's not impacting the original file. We're going to get a transformed file that will be separate from that. And that can be really helpful as well as those files may, in this case, they may move in and out of the folder. But everything is recorded there. Now, let's just say that we have a, a column here or that we have order status and that is something that we, we don't need, for instance. So I could, I could come in here and right click on this and remove it. So you can see once again, it comes in and it's an action and it's removed. But if I delete that, and here I hover over it and look for my delete, then it comes back. So that becomes, here again, you can try, test things out. So basically what we've done here is we've captured each of the steps we want to apply to the worksheets. And so we've cleaned up columns and rows and created some calculations and so on. So now what our next step is? Well, we're going to go to the home tab here and I'll close and load. So on the far left hand side, close and load, All right? So now this is gonna, we're gonna be back in Excel, always like crossing my fingers, right? <laughs> and notice what's happened here. I'm in a new workbook. The worksheet tab is reflected of, of the, the folder name, Power Query Practice. I have a table that has all of those calculations, all of those changes. And so now, what do I wanna do with this? Well, a couple different things. So first of all, let's go ahead and save this. So I want to save this and I'll go ahead then and let's just say that, save it as a relative location, what makes sense for you, where do you wanna put it? And I think, yeah, well, we'll, we'll this will work for us for right now, I think. And so I'll go ahead and save this now. So this is what we're what we're saving here are multiple things. We're saving the the power query steps, and here are the results. But these results can change as we might. Um, as the data might change itself, that is in, in those individual worksheets, or as we might add in a new month, for instance, or a new year. So those are what, some of the things to keep in mind. Also notice that even though we had formatted it in that, sometimes you may have to come back here and format on your own. So and I'll go ahead here and apply this that I want to change this to the currency format. And I think I'll make those a little bit wider. So they're just a little bit easier to view. So there can be some things that we might need to still tweak a little bit in this end result. But one of the things I want you to notice here as well, on the right hand side, we have um, 2,483 rows that are loaded. We hover over this and you can kind of see that it will show you what we've done what this looks like. And so that is what we have so far. So we've been able to transform the data, combine it into one, and to be able to see then as well where this data is coming from. So let's go ahead then and, and look here. And you can see yeah, it's all coming here from this, this particular folder. Now, if I want to go back, I'm going to go to the, I'm in this, this table, 
and I'll go to the query tab here and I can choose edit. So that's going to switch me back into the Power Query Editor where I could make other changes to that. So if there was something else that I wanted to change or something else that I wanted to move around or whatever that might be, then I could make that change and then I would come back and close and load. So that's just to give you that sense of what's possible. So hopefully you're already starting to see some applications for how Power Query could work for you with your projects, things that you might be currently doing manually or working with macros where you would be able to set these up in Excel. And you can always, you can always create a practice folder or a practice area just to try this because keeping in mind that it, we're not changing that original data. So this is what we have so far. So let's take this um, data in this case and we're going to come back and do more work with it and we're going you know we'll create a, a pivot table and a chart with it so we have all of those different possibilities but I want you to see a little bit different approach to it and here again it could be just to clean up data so we're going to look at an example where we might want to find uh, potential duplicates, for instance. Okay. So with this, um, and I don't have to go to a new blank workbook, but I just want just to make this a little bit clearer that we're, it's not happening in the one that we're working with here. So I'm, I'll go once again back to, I've got a, a file that Maybe I'm concerned it has duplicates and I don't want to have to try to find them. Maybe they're just thousands and thousands of rows. So I'll go to data, get data. And here I'll do from file. So in this case, it's just an individual file, an Excel workbook. In this case, you can see that you could get it from other sources. And let's go back to our practice file. So in this case, this is one that just is, has some duplicates in it. I'll open that. It's going to examine that. And as we saw before, we would then pick where the worksheet is. In this case, it's the order data as well. I'll go ahead then and load this. Now that before the option was combine and load because I had multiple files in that folder. So now I have this file that potentially has multiple duplicates. So the first thing about this is that we might want to figure out if we have duplicates where they are. Okay. Now it looks like we also have some errors and we could also, as this loads now, what are those errors? What, what, would what would that be? What can happen here is it will show you, for instance, and you can see it has some errors with those promo ones. So that would be one of the things that we would probably want to, uh, that we would want to add to that. Let's see. Okay. So Let's come back here. This is what I this is what I had. I exited out of that and I want to come back into it. So I'll go to query and edit. And I won't won't be too concerned about that. However, because I have those errors, it would be a good thing for me to filter those out. So I'm going to go to my drop down here first of all. And as we saw before, Or maybe let me see if I can search for it. Okay. Well, it's all right. We got the errors in a separate file. We're gonna we're gonna just continue moving forward here. So for some reason, it's not showing us those errors. It's not giving us that option. But if we can, if they pop up, we'll go ahead and look at that now. Let's look at, first of all, how could we find where those air, where we might have duplicates? Because that's really what we want to focus on here. First of all, I'm going to select the order ID, 
pull down the control, the cust control so I can pick the customer ID because I'm saying these are the places I want you to look for potential duplicates. You may have to select three or four columns to make sure that you're not losing something. But let's first of all, see where we have duplicates. So in the home tab, I'm going to say keep rows and keep duplicates because I want to see. Okay, well, there we go. <laughs> I gotta get rid of those, those guys. Okay, for some reason then it's coming back. I'm going to go ahead and delete this and let's see if we can get rid of those errors. So I want to remove the rows where there are errors. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can approach this a little differently. Now let's come back in here and say, keep rows. I'll select again with control. So that was another way for me to get rid of those errors once I knew what they were. I could keep rows here and keep duplicates. So I want to see where my duplicates are, first of all make sure that they really are legitimate with this that I'm, you know, I might be making some guesses. And so now this was set up purposely so that you could see that we've got some re repetitive information, but we can see that we might have some inconsistency. So we might have to go into the original data and maybe combine or capture this just to be able to make sure that we're not skipping something or we may have to do a little bit more auditing. So that's the idea here too double check what those duplicates are before you just decide that you're going to get rid of them. But let's assume that we really don't want those duplicates. So I'm going to go ahead here and uh, remove this step. And we have these two selected. So I remove rows and I can remove the duplicates. So right now I have 706 rows. I remove the duplicates. I have 702 rows. So it's going to capture then basically the second one of that occurrence. And that's why you may want to go in and double check your data first. But you have those options. So now we've got this data cleaned up. I'll go ahead and choose close and load. And now I have the, the data cleaned up. And notice that it no longer is reflecting any of those errors that it has. I have 702 rows loaded. And then I can certainly save this as a um, end result, for instance, is a clean version of certainly there's other things that I might want to apply to that. So that's the idea in terms of working with duplicates. But let's go, let's go back to what we had before. And that was these results. And we've got three years worth of data that are part of this. Okay, so let's, first of all, we'll look at a, creating a pivot table, a pivot chart, and I'll show you what happens when data might be updated. So that's another uh, piece for that. So for our pivot table, it just behaves any, just like a regular pivot table in Excel, we just need to move somewhere into the source data here. And this is formatted as a table, not required, but certainly helpful in a lot of different ways. Next, we'll go to insert and pick pivot table. We'll confirm the name, the range of data, and we'll add that pivot table to a new worksheet. So just as our pivot, these are the standard pivot table options. We've, um, a couple years ago, I think we had a webinar on working with pivot tables in Excel, and we're going to bring that one back in 2023, just to make sure that you really have all of these basics. But let's look at a really simple pivot table. And in this case, then, what I want to see is maybe the data broken out by the order date. Okay, so now I can see I've got the data by all three years. And I should take you back to that first one because I've got to show you that. That is, if I look at my um, order date here, I can also see that all three of those worksheets came in. 
even though I only applied the transformation to that first sample. So that's the piece here. So I'm going to go back to the sheet too, where I have starting to build out this pivot table. Additionally, then I want to see the profit. Now by selecting it, because it's a numeric uh, value, it will automatically drop into the values. Now the order date is also showing up as years, quarters as well. It's not just the years. You can see with the plus here. So this is a standard way that the data is presented in a pivot table when it's a date. A couple things here. I'll right click on this profit, go to my number format. I don't have to select all of that. That's this is going to be a, going to be a property that's part of that value in the pivot table. And let's go ahead and make this currency. All right, so that is then our what we have so far. Now, if I want to, I could expand this date. I'll click into one of the years, pivot table analyze. And what I'm going to do here is expand that field. So now I can see it by quarters. And if I wanted to see it by months, I could then go to the quarters and expand that further as well. So that would be an option. I'll go ahead and collapse that. But now I'm able to see the data broken out in a little bit different way as well. So this is what I have so far with this pivot table. Let's take it a little, a little bit further than in working with it. And that is we're going to go ahead and create a pivot chart as well. Okay, so that's the next piece that we have here. And we'll do so under the pivot table analyze. I go to pivot chart. And let's make this a line chart because we're just looking at maybe as we have trends across time. I'll go ahead and OK for that. And this is based upon the data that we currently have as we're choosing to, to show it. So we have it broken out by the quarters, for instance. If we collapse that, for instance, if we went back to that year, pivot table analyze, and we said collapses, notice how that data changes. So we return it back to showing it quarterly. If we really, as I mentioned, if we really wanted to show more, we could then expand again by the months and we would have that presentation as well for it. So that is another option for us. So that, that's what we have. Then we have a pivot table with a pivot chart. I'll go ahead then and collapse it just so it's a little easier to see, but know that that's your option. So a couple of things that are happening here. Right now, we applied that power, the query against three years that were in that folder. Now I've got new data. So what I want to do is see what happens, or I want to apply all that hard work to one more year. So let's look at what we've got so far. At this point, our results, we have 2,483 rows loaded. We have three years. So let's go back to our folder structure. Because we applied the query to that entire folder, I can take this new order data here and I'm going to move it, I could copy it too, but I'm going to move it into this folder. Now, when I move it to that folder, let's look at that again, it's now here, all right? So we've, I've added that in. Now in this worksheet, I'm going to go to data, refresh all and refresh all. So let's see what happens here. It loads the query and I went, now I have 3,185 rows. And if we look at my order date, for instance, I have all four years. So I, 
I've been able to add the data and notice how then it has been combined. If for instance, I filtered this and I said, I only wanted to see the most recent year, I'm able to see this data and to be able to work with it. And it was just because I moved a workbook that had the same structure as the data, but needed some cleanup. And now I've got it all. So that's one of the really powerful things about creating these queries is we can move data in and out of that folder. You know, maybe it's something, you know, every month you want to, you're going to add another month to it, or maybe then you have a change in the calendar year. Now you're going to be completely um, starting up with a completely different year. There's lots of different options in terms of how you can work with it. Now we still have, well, let's go to our pivot table. We still want to refresh this as well. And we may need to fix a few things with this, but let's go to pivot table analyze. And as we're working with and looking at this data, here's refresh and we want to do a refresh all. So all goes well, it just adds that new year in here. Sometimes you may need to remove a field and bring it back in, just depends upon how you're working with it. But in this way, it was really, really, you know, streamlined, worked exactly the way it's supposed to, which is always what we like. But the idea here, it's refreshing against the, the data that was the data source, which got refreshed because we put moved a new workbook into that. So that gives us a lot of the flexibility. And at any time, as we start working through this data, if we wanted to, we could go back to our query and edit it so that we could apply different changes to it or make modifications to that, but we have that flexibility. So that gives you a look at the power of using Power Query in Excel. The flexibility to transform your data very quickly and apply those changes to multiple data sources. I hope this has been a really helpful look at getting started with Power Query in Excel. And gives you some a framework and something to, to feel like this is something that you could also use and might save you hours or even days of time. We continue to share these monthly training series, these monthly training webinars. So this is on the second Tuesday of each month coming up in December, we have Microsoft Word, we'll look at mail merge techniques and we'll be soon sharing our schedule for 2023 as well. So I hope you will join us and, and, pay, and look for those, that communication from K-Square technology in terms of what's coming up for us. Also, uh, when this webinar wraps up, you will see a survey that pops up on the screen, and this is your opportunity to share what topics might be of interest to you. We'd certainly like to see you in the future for our future webinar series. We appreciate as well the opportunity that you joined us today to find out how you can more effectively use Power Query in Microsoft Excel. Let us know as well how we can help you to be more productive. Reach out to us for IT services and consulting that really support your Microsoft technologies. Thanks for joining us today.